we've washed it, we've yep. decontaminated it, and now this GTR is ready for polishing. I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. And this is DIY Detail. Now, we're gonna be polishing this, but a lot of you viewers are looking at what we have in our hands, and they're strangely not dual action machines. These are rotary polishers, yeah. and we're going to jewel this paint before we lay on our ceramic coating. Exactly, so we're gonna be using the gold standard polishing system with our rotary jeweling pad. It makes the paint pop, for lack of a better term. It makes it shine, it gives it depth, it gives it color without removing too much paint. This vehicle has been detailed before. This vehicle has been detailed many times before. And polished many times. The owner admits as such, yeah. we know there's some repainted panels here, finite clear coat. We're going to opt for shine and gloss and we're right. gonna leave the deep scratches. Right, and thankfully, there's not many deep scratches. It's actually in very good shape. We're going to be glossing the paint, enhancing that gloss, not by adding something to the paint, but by taking away what little oxidation there is and just jeweling the surface, hence the jeweling pad. And why are we using a rotary? Because it adds amazing optical shine. Right. I used to be a hater of the rotary. Exactly. I didn't understand why you would ever finish with a rotary, but it's that smooth movement that from five feet away looks more glossy than any dual action I've used. Exactly. It's one of those you almost have to try it to understand it, but with this fat, I'm gonna call it this fat foam on the rotary jeweling pad, it makes user error a little bit less pronounced. It really makes the rotary polishing process very simple. You keep right. a flat pad, no pressure, speed one. And also important is having a damp pad. So we have the pad washers here. We never put clean polish on a dirty pad. We do a section, once we're done that section, we clean the pad, we spin it out. It's just lightly damp at that point. It's not wet, we don't want a wet pad. It just adds about a gram of water to the pad, so not a lot, but that cools the pad even further. And the cooler we can be, the better it is. We have our machines set at speed one, not two, speed one. The lowest they will go. We're not putting any pressure on the machine whatsoever. This is relaxing, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Polishing should not be a chore, it should be something you want to do. Ivan, you're talking about it, I want to do it. Yeah. Boom, spin the pad. I've already dampened and cleaned my pad. One, Ivan did the same thing. One spray of polish is all you need. Resist the temptation to put two on the machine. We know what you're doing out there, all right? Save yourself some money in product and just use one. Now you may ask yourself, guys, aren't you putting swirls all over this paint? It is a rotary after all. Right, no we're not. That's a myth of the rotary. Misuse of the rotary causes swirls, not the rotary. Off we go. Nick, as you're moving the bucket over to the other side for better efficiency, thank you. Yeah. One thing that, I heard some keyboards going off in the background. Yes, we're not wiping it off. Not a big deal. It's not gonna dry, it's not gonna cake on. You can leave it there for an hour or two if you like. The gold standard polish likes it when you work it for longer amounts of time and it doesn't mind sitting on the paint for a little bit. No. Again, out of direct sunlight, please don't do this in direct sunlight. I know you can use our product in sunlight. Right. But this whole thing about sunlight friendly, it's, it's great if your product is sunlight friendly. And I sure hope that ours is. It I is. I just never want, exactly, I just never want to recommend it. No. Because it's gonna take one person really having a mess up. It has everything to do with the sun. Yeah. And not the products. Exactly. That being said, let's get back to polishing. Woohoo! How goes it, Nick? It's going really well, Evan. Yourself? Excellent. We're starting to wipe off. One thing I wanted to mention, Ivan, is uh, you can polish trim with the gold standard. It's safe for trim, and I think that's just so great. I'm not necessarily going after trim. No. But I'm not worried about 
the pad going over the panel and hitting trim because it's perfectly safe. Exactly. There's no dust, it's not gonna stain trim, and it just makes it a little less stressful when you're polishing a, a nice car like this. Exactly. All this work has led up to this, applying our five-year ceramic coating. The moment of truth. Look, the owner takes us to car shows. Right. He wants the glossiest possible coating in the lineup. He's going to get it. Exactly. Five-year coating is the gloss. So off we go. We apply in a circular motion. We box in the panel that we're working on. And I'll get this A pillar while I'm there. I'm just starting my stopwatch. Yeah, so we want to let it set roughly around five minutes. And then, with a low nap towel, level the excess. And then with a fluffier towel, just buff it to a shine. When you first start off, the uh, pad isn't quite primed, so I put a little more on, and I actually had a run in the coating. So just wipe that off so it can be easier to level for you. And actually, I have another one right there, so we'll get rid of that. Well, what voodoo magic are you doing over there, Ivan? What do you mean? He opened the trunk, that was a smart move. Yeah. That way we can get underneath the spoiler. We're gonna coat the windows as well. Make them a lot easier to clean in the future. And of course, really hydrophobic. Now you'll notice I'm overlapping onto the door a little bit. rocker panel here. And the reason I overlapped onto the door is I want to make sure, absolutely, that we have coverage panel to panel. I'm gonna do the underside of the spoiler here so that when we put this down, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And how's the slickness there, Nick? It's amazing. I'm going a little bit sooner than five minutes on this just because I don't wanna lose you over there. Well, and it's very effortless to buff off. Right, and also it's humid in the the shop today, and that humidity makes the coating cure just a little faster. When you're wiping off, Nick wiped off a little early for a reason. It's quite humid in the shop here today, and that humidity makes it so that the coating can be a little more difficult to remove. Or not difficult, but it cures a little faster, because it is humidity cured. And because of the high humidity in the shop, we just wanted to make sure that everything came off easily and as it should. So testing it, what, you're like three minutes in, Tested it, wiped off fine, so we're good to go. So just like when I did the rear panel, I'm overlapping the door onto the front fender, and I'll actually overlap the door onto the rear quarter panel. And the reason for that is to make sure we have coverage. And when Nick wipes off, he does the same thing. He goes past the panel he's working on to assure that we've got everywhere covered. The mirror has sat for a little longer. How's the wipe off there? Super easy, Ivan. Okay. Super easy. So no concerns. So that whole front door is done. I'll attack the trunk or the boot lid, depending on where you're watching from. What country are you watching from? We like to know that. We see the statistics, but in the comments, we can't tell exactly where you're from unless you tell us. Ivan, how would you describe applying all of these three coatings? The difference in how they lay down, how they wipe off? They're they all level. Like. Yeah, they're all very easy, first of all. The, uh, the three year is by far the easiest and the slickest because of the graphene content, graphene oxide, sorry. And the eight year is almost as slick. Now, this five year requires a little more I won't say experience, but just you have to be a little more careful with it. It is a thicker formula. It is there for gloss, and in that, it has the capacity to uh, create a high spot a little easier. Which all you do then is take your applicator 
Yeah, with product on it, dab it on the surface, level it right away. Right. And I'm wanting to make sure I get the underside of the spoiler all coated as well. Just because it doesn't see the sun doesn't mean it doesn't deserve to be coated. a good fight and I'm proud of what we did here. Exactly. Today, sir. We now have a bright blue and glossy Godzilla. The GTR is back to life. The five year coating is no joke, you guys. Ivan, do you have any final thoughts on installation tips? Yeah. Monitor the wipe off time. We say five minutes, it could be a little less, it can be a little more. Humidity is definitely the determining factor. Today it's humid here. We washed a lot of cars in here today, so the humidity coming off the floor, the heat, et cetera, combined to have a humid atmosphere, the higher the humidity, the faster the cure time. Now, it was still two to three minutes, so not, you're, you're not in a big rush. But you don't need to be dogmatic about five if you're wondering why am I having a tough time getting these high right. spots off. Exactly. Reduce the time that you let it sit on the paint. Yeah. Very simple. Again, ceramic coatings are professional level. Right. So it's simple, but it's important to not totally follow a dogmatic structure every time. If it's not working for you, this is one thing you can do. Especially exactly. we've noticed with the five-year coating. Right, so high humidity, high temperatures, do one small panel, let it sit for two minutes. Start wiping. If your towel is getting wet, if it feels like you're dragging liquid around, then you're not leveling the coating, you're actually removing some coating, let it sit another minute. Try it again. And when you find that sweet spot, could be three, could be five, could be eight, depending on your temperature and humidity, then you know you've got your, your rule of thumb and follow it through. This thing looks amazing. You know, if you like amazing vehicles, you're definitely gonna wanna check this video out. It's pretty epic.